This time out, I'm going to show you my approach for applying Mixbus processing, including dynamics, when printing mix stems. Let's get into it. If you're a working mix engineer like myself, chances are you've had to deliver final files to your clients or their record label. While mix dumps have become part of this deliverable, that way the business can prepare for any audio need that they may encounter in the future. The main reason mix stems exist these days is simple, flexibility. Whether you're working in sync licensing and providing music to a video editor, or working with an artist, providing mix stems at the end of your project has become part of the standard deliverable. These additional files allow a client to revisit the song in the future and make changes, new masters, remixes, radio edits, etc. I've seen some talk online about this subject, so I decided to create this video. The tough thing about printing mix stems is they often don't include the exact dynamic structure of your mix bus from your final mix, but I believe I've created a solution for this. Before we dive into a session, I want to say that I believe it's imperative that we focus on the song first and the stem second. So, whatever you're working on, stand tall, have conviction, make the best mix possible first, and then worry about the conversation with the suits about supplying mix stems. That said, let's dive in and I'll show you how I print my mix stems. Now, I'm going to assume that you understand how to route tracks into a mix bus and what mix bus processing is, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Now, mix stems are defined by the song itself. So depending on the source material of your song, that helps me define what subgroups I create and how I print these mix stems, or organize the mix stems, essentially. This could be things such as drums, vocals, guitars, sound effects, lead vocals, background vocals. It really, again, depends on the song. Now, how you group these elements together is up to you, but I encourage you to consider who will use these files and how they will be used in the future. So make intentional decisions with your organization. All right, so let's move over to the doll and I'll show you how I print my stems. So what we have here is a project that I produced a handful of years or so ago. Um, heavy rock band, female fronted. Let me play a little bit of this track for you. I always love this intro, three over four, really cool stuff. There's a quick look at the song. So let me lay out the anatomy of the session just so you understand what's going on on screen. Now, full transparency, these are the final mix stems that I printed in the past. So what we have is drums, sound effects, bass guitar, guitar one, guitar two. So those are like main guitars and then lead guitars, keys, lead vocal, and then a background vocal. So I'm gonna hide all those, those tracks, without diving too deep into my mix template, those tracks come to multiple mix buses. What I love about this uh, technique that I've created, whether you're using a single mix bus or multi mix bus like myself, this processing can work. <clears throat> so V here is my vocal mix bus. I don't have any processing on these mix buses. Uh, except for the main mix bus, so let, let's get to that. So we have V for vocals, mix bus A, mix bus B, mix bus C, mix bus D, and mix bus E. All of those then go to fader. Fader is essentially my main mix bus. Now, I send out to my meters, so anytime I play song, um, this is just I.O. configuration with the bus. As you can see, I've got meters and I've got a reference track, so I can put, you know, a rough mix in there. And then with my hardware, I've got my Matrix Studio program to flip back and forth between output, so I can quickly uh, reference a rough mix or what the client 
has sent or, or whatever. So then from there, I activate the input on this print track and that's where I print my mix stems. So hopefully all that makes sense. To the right here, we have VCAs. Now I have a VCA in this track, like I'd mentioned before, I let the source material of the track create my subgroups. So lead vocal, background vocal, sound effects, keys, guitars, bass, drums, and then I have a master VCA that turns all VCAs on or off. All right, so now let's talk about the limitations of mix bus processing. I'm gonna turn this external side chain off. Um, obviously you can see, I love the germanium compressor from SoftTube or from Chandler Limited. SoftTube makes this plugin. It's one of my favorite mix bus compressors, not only sonically, but it also has a side chain input. <clears throat> We're heading down that path. Um, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I wanted to turn the external side chain off first so I can show you the problem of current uh, mix stems and why it's difficult to, to essentially apply mix bus compression to mix stems. So if I play this track and then end up soloing these one of these groups, you'll see the mix bus compression will change. I wrote you this letter to say There's things in this life I can't explain Like why you crossed my path And let me So there's a good example. Soloing a group changes the amount of compression that the mix bus is applying to the audio file. So when you go to print your mix stems, it's never, it's never the same. What do I mean by that? If you have 10 subgroups feeding into two channels, there's a certain amount of dynamics processing happening there. Now, if you remove one of those subgroups from that processing, that mix bus architecture or the input is, getting, is gonna get altered. Now, that's a, a thing that people have been talking about online, and, and again, that's where I wanted to show the solution. And it's a pretty simple solution. Um, admittedly, it took me a while to figure this out, but when I've been working in Dolby Atmos, I figured out a way, and I have a video that I'll link after this if you'd like to see that. I've essentially applied my Dolby Atmos thinking to my stereo mixing, and it's worked wonderfully. And that is, the answer is sidechain. So, let me turn my external sidechain back on. I'm gonna close this plugin just for now. And then show you what I do. So I create a stereo audio track. I go into my IO and I create a stereo bus and I name it stem key. Now, when I, what does key mean? Now that's a key input from a compressor. So whatever bus compressor you pick, I think it's best to have one that has a sidechain input for this purpose. There have been some bus compressors in the past that I've loved, they just have not had a sidechain input. So again, I love the Chandler. Um, so what I do, again, so I create that IO path and then I have a stereo audio track. And what I do is I import, once my arrangement and the mix is done, client approves the song, I'll bring that final mix in to this stereo audio track. Now the audio, um, the routing essentially, or the output routing of this track goes to the input of that compressor. So there's the stem key routing that I showed in my IO. Now what that does is the mix bus compression isn't keyed off the tracks themselves. I know this example shows stems, but it could be a hundred tracks. All those tracks feeding into the input, well, I've created a separate input stage of the final mix. So your final mix feeds the, the input stage of the mix bus. That way, if you show, uh, or excuse me, that way if you solo any group while this mix is playing with the external side chain engaged, 
the mix bus compression won't change. So let me show you that. I'm gonna start playing the song first and I'll solo some of these groups and you'll see the mix bus compression won't change. So as you can see, that new stereo path is feeding the input to the mix stems, or excuse me, is feeding the input of the mix bus. Now if I solo that stem, all 10 subgroups or whatever is in your track are there all the time. And that's essentially how I apply my mix bus compression to my mix stems. And so there's a before and after. I've showed you how the gain reaction or the gain reduction meter works. Um, and then from there, you're off and printing your stems. Now, you could print this in offline mode, like bounce to disk. I don't trust that personally. So I print my mix stems one at a time, and I make a coffee, sit right in front of the speakers, maybe do some emails or something like that. But I try to pay attention to my mix bus processing and how those stems are printing. Um, it's essentially a final QA or quality assurance step for me. And essentially what that is, again, without going too deep into my mix um, template, out of the fader, I send to a print track. So this input that's activated, whatever we soloed, whether it's the drums, I can come here, rename this track. So don't call it love, the band, uh, Tomorrow the World. And I'm gonna label this drum stem, and if I print, I'm just going to go quickly to a, a place that has audio, record here. So then as I work through the song, I print one at a time, I bounce those out, and those go into my final file delivery. And that's it. By applying this technique, your mix bus processing stays intact, and it's applied to your printed mix stems. This approach has helped me reduce a lot of tail chasing when doing recalls, and I hope it helps you out. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more helpful videos like this, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.